All right, everybody, so let's talk about this new unit um, and how we're going to read a book together in this new hybrid schedule that we have going on. Um, so first off, let me talk a little bit about the approach that I'm used to using and the one that we will use if we get the chance to uh, when we get to Gatsby, which is Socratic seminar all the time. So I'm used to students coming in um, every single day, we do a Socratic seminar, and the twist is instead of me asking a lot of the questions uh, and providing a lot of the questions, one of your peers does. So there's always a group that's in charge. That group is responsible for uh, coming up with questions and leading the discussion. Um, we walk through the discussion, and then we, we kind of pick apart little critiques about how that Socratic seminar could have could have gone differently. We look at different forms of Socratic seminars um, and different approaches, um, and it's usually a, a really kind of productive uh, way to learn how to have a really good book discussion, um, the type of book discussion that you will likely have in a college class. So that's what I'm trying to emulate. Um, and of course, that prepares you in a number of different ways. It helps you to look at books a little differently, even than you have done in the past. Um, I'm a little more freeform than Miss Cartier. Big surprise there, right? Um, and I'm, I would say I'm not as freeform as Mr. Jennings, uh, who really has the book thing kind of down. Um, so obviously, we can't do that this year because we can't all get together as a group of 15. Um, and even if we could, with all the screens and everything, I, I don't think it would be very productive. So we have to shift some of uh, how we're thinking about this book, and that's why I wanted to make a video instead of just typing it out for everybody. So the first thing that has to stay is the groups. Um, I really want you working with two or three other people. Um, we have 15 individual reading days, uh, and so we're going to have 15 groups. Uh, I think there are 49 of you, or 48 of you, so that means that we'll have a couple groups of four, but mostly groups of three. Um, we are going to work as a whole contingent. Um, that way we don't worry too much about losing people who are virtual or trying to keep within the confines of like fifth hour or whatever, whatever is going on in the building, um, and we can work digitally. So... Um, we will continue to have discussions about the book that are separate from what's going on online, um, but those will be like opportunities. So it just happens that you're seeing me on Tuesday. That's the day that we're going to talk about what has happened so far in the book as a, as a group, right, as a small group. Uh, that's going to be different than what's going on daily. So uh, let's say that your group um, picks, picks Wednesday as your day. Uh, what you want to do is prepare by uh, having read chapter or pages 1 through 15 uh, on the reading guide uh, well ahead of Wednesday, I would say Tuesday at the latest, and you're going to come up with some discussion questions, um, and those discussion questions you're going to put on the discussion board. There's one discussion board for Lincoln and the Bardo, and, and feel free to give me feedback. If that's not working, we can come up with some other kind of way. Um, and then everybody else, when you're reading, you have that discussion board there, you're going to attend to that discussion board in some way. So interact with the discussion board in some way um, on your reading day. And then uh, that group who's responsible for the questions will let me know, here's what our participation was like. Okay, So you get participation points. Um, I would usually do it daily, but it's going to end up just being one kind of big grade uh, based on the reporting of your peers. Um, groups are also in charge of adding to a hyperlink document. So the hyperlink document um, is where we're going to add a bunch of content, and I'll walk us through a little bit how to do that uh, in a second when I transition my slides. The discussions and the groups and everything, there are uh, quite a few documents that you want to pay attention to pretty regularly. Um, the first one is the reading schedule. So I have given us a reading schedule, um, and this is also a sign-up page. So that group that signs up for Wednesday, you're going to add uh, names down here so that I know, you know that date is secured. Um, I do want you to be aware that uh, the Friday groups are a little bigger, um, so I'm not so much worried about um, getting content out before Friday, more like 
Friday evening so that people can read over the weekend uh, because that is there are always going to be much more pages. Um, and just kind of, again, being aware, like, well, if I'm a Monday group, then I've got to read all the Friday stuff and the Monday stuff uh, and prepare stuff for people on Monday, right? So, so we're just being aware that we're reading ahead. And of course, this is a, a good guiding document for you. Um, so that's one document that you really want to be um, looking at pretty consistently. Uh, and of course, it's got its own page on, on Canvas. Um, the other document that we're going to be looking to is this hyperlink slide presentation. So uh, what we're going to do is instead of kind of having um, these out loud discussions, uh, the, the discussion boards really can't do justice to the out loud discussion that we can have. So instead we want to bank a lot of resources. And how we're going to do that is coming to the slide presentation. So you'll notice that I've actually linked to, like, here's what a hyperlink is. Uh, it's a kind of a professional teachery document that goes actually up here to University of Pitt. Um, that's going to talk about, like, here's how to make, uh, you know, a slide uh, using a link, et cetera, et cetera. Here's, here are some uses for it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's really not very, very difficult to make a slide with a link. Um, but what are you linking to, right? So that becomes the next important thing. So what are you linking to? Um, I want you to link to content that pairs well with the assignment itself, with the reading. So you and your group are talking a little bit about how are we pairing the reading with something else. And um, I'll give you a couple examples that might be good. Another one, this is in the supplementary resources, is uh, this discussion of metamedia. So Lincoln on the Bardo is, is a story that takes place in a graveyard. Our main characters are dead. Uh, we're going to find that out pretty quickly. That's not really a spoiler. Um, and as a result of that, like, we're really going to have to face things like mortality. What does religion say about mortality? What does uh, our own instinct say about mortality? We're really going to be dealing with that. And then on top of that, there's like an Americanness that's, that's really wrapped around this novel that we'll get to talk to as well. Um, and, and so really a lot of this novel has to do with metacognition, right? Being aware of the, the fact that life is uh, short um, and that there's a reality behind, um, behind our own reality, right? Um, and so meta um, essentially means metacognition, um, that, that there's a layer beyond the layer. Um, really, films that do this incredibly well, The Matrix, uh, you're actually going to hear The Matrix if you're planning on taking AP Lit, uh, now would be a good time to watch this movie because you're going to get some references to it next year. Groundhog Day, a fantastic, uh, you know, picture. All of these are fantastic pictures that deal with meta uh, commentary. Monty Python, if you're a Monty Python fan, this is kind of a time to, to engage with a really difficult one, Meaning of Life. Um, lighter side of that would be Stranger Than Fiction, Inception, if you've seen that, Blade Runner, if you've seen that. All these are fantastic. You know, Beetlejuice is we're kind of still in the, the you know, halloween -y season. Sixth Sense is we're still in the halloween -y season. Um, kind of getting to, you know, well, what, what's this whole afterlife thing about? Um, all of these are going to deal with, with those types of questions. Uh, songs that really do that. I need to add more songs, but this is kind of your job, right? I've come up with some pairings for you. You're coming up with more pairings. So if you have a good song that should kind of go with, uh, with the book, then that would work. Um, you know, other books, uh, you know, not that, I, not that I think I'm the only one teaching a course right now, but uh, really other books that pair with books, uh, thinking about these types of things, like Dante's Divine Comedy is a fantastic one about a man who is voyaging into the underworld. The Odyssey also has men voyaging into the underworld. Even um, the, you know, just some of those Greek myths that deal with the underworld are great. Um, the Good Place, uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't ever seen The Good Place, uh, it might be worth your time to make that, you know, I'm going to watch this show as we read this book. I, we have, you know, three and a half weeks to read the book. Um, certainly enough time to watch all of those episodes if you, if you have the time to kind of carve out. Um, and really, I think, a beautifully uh, intelligent and empathetic show that, that pairs very well with Lincoln and the Bardo. In fact, I might, 
I, I just recently watched the whole series again, and I, I might have to do it again as we're reading this book. Uh, Black Mirror, uh, also on Netflix, deals with some of these same issues of kind of what happens, what happens after we die. Um, and so the, the meta, if you can kind of connect these things and add, you know, your whys to this hyperlink and you're kind of finding the resources and linking them in, that's what I want to see you doing as a group to push out to everybody else. All right, everybody, so bear with me. <laughs> this is kind of a new teaching experience for me. Uh, and what we're gonna talk about uh, with Lincoln and the Bardo today is just a lot of setup. So I don't mind that the image is actually pretty large um, because what I'm talking about first is just how crazy this book is put together. Uh, I did promise you a book like none that you had ever read. And that starts out whether you have read the first couple chapters or not. Um, with a pretty, you know, what seems like straightforward reading experience. And then we get to the end of this kind of diatribe, and then we see Hans Volman, right? So this is kind of weird. We don't necessarily know what to make of it. And then we see another exchange, and then we see Roger Bevins III. So if you hadn't really tracked so far, uh, the name of the person speaking is going to be underneath the set of dialogue that they've just spoken. So Hans Volman introduces the book. And then we're going to get to Roger Bevins. These two are friends, uh, as we, as we find out pretty quickly. And they're going to be attached, uh, throughout most of the book. So they're, they're consistently talking back and forth. Um, and that's the, that's the, the end of our first chapter, right? That's the, the hard part to kind of understand. Um, then we get chapter two. So just when we thought we understood something about how to read the text, we get a block of text, and then we get underneath it um, what seems to be a citation. Um, and so this is actually a citation. It's George Saunders telling us exactly where this quote comes from. Um, and this quote and the way that this writing is presented is entirely different than the narrative from before. This is essentially nonfiction. What we read in chapter one is fiction. So already he's shaking us up in a lot of different ways, and this book is going to intertwine fiction and nonfiction. I'm gonna throw another curveball at you early on in this reading experience. Sometimes George Saunders makes up his citations and the quotes that go with them. More times than not, he accurately uses a quote and a citation. So he's actually told us this, the author is, has told us this as a part of a reading experience when he published the book, is that some of these are made up, but most of them are accurate. Um, then we kind of get to, uh, again, more citation, but kind of some language that is really off to you. Leech op sit. So this is, this is actually another citation, but one that you would never have seen before. And so again, like another kind of odd encounter. And just as we're making our way through the last 15 pages, we get basically fiction, nonfiction, nonfiction. And so one of the questions we should be asking ourselves as readers is why is Saunders doing this to us? Is this book a fiction or a nonfiction? Um, what distinguishes the difference between fiction and nonfiction? Uh, how many of these quotes are real? What do they mean? Uh, what, are, what is he trying to get at, right? These are kind of all the questions that are floating around the text. 